The first part of the chapter one is making conjectures and inductive reasoning. A conjecture is a logical guess based on evidence. Inductive reasoning is the kind that many of us use daily, and it works well for a lot of situations. This kind of reasoning goes something like this. In this situation, I see a pattern of events. It probably is a pattern that continues in other situations as well. So you generalize based on what you've seen. If experience shows a break or change in that pattern, we modify our conclusion to say the pattern continues except in this and that circumstance. So you basically say, you know what? I think this is going to happen every time I see that it's a pattern. Oh, wait, I see something that doesn't work. Therefore, it doesn't work here. Most of us do most of our learning through observation of patterns and inductive reasoning. That's how you learn to walk, talk, spell, and probably do arithmetic, so you see patterns. But inductive reasoning never lets you prove that a pattern always continues. It only lets you say that it's consistent in the circumstances you've observed so far. So you cannot prove it that it happens all the time in every situation. Your method of walking, for instance, would not work very well on the moon. It's a pattern formed under specific circumstances on Earth. Your conclusions about what to do in order to walk only apply here on this planet. So you'd have to relearn how to walk on the moon, ride a bike on the moon, all those kind of things. Let's look at a couple examples. My kindergarten teacher liked apples. My first grade teacher liked apples. This is my conclusion. My second grade teacher will like apples too. It's a good conclusion based on what you've observed so far, but it may not be true. And you have to think of why it may not be true. Another example. 90% of the students at the school passed the test. Sarah is a student at the school, so she passed the test. Again, you've seen a large uh, pattern, 90% of students, which is quite a large portion of the students. So you're applying that to Sarah because she's a student too. Now, you're more, more than likely to get it right that Sarah passed, but there is a 10% chance that you could be wrong. So keep that in mind that inductive reasoning does not always work, and it's just based on observation. Finally, Marie likes to color. Marie likes to draw. Therefore, Marie will enjoy having a birthday party at an art studio. Again, not a bad conclusion, a fairly good one. However, you have to think of, what, well, maybe why would this not be true? What, what, what would make this not true? Maybe. But again, inductive reasoning is, is a conclusion based on a pattern that you've seen before.